full Khaleesi on your ass. Yeah. Welcome back to the <laughs> Convo Couch. Pasta Jardula here. And I'm Fiorella. And Johnny Sue is on the ones and twos. See how I made it nice and easy for you to come walking in the door, fam? No. I didn't overhype it. I didn't go crazy. I kept it nice and easy peasy, smooth and cheesy. Not real cheese, though. Vegan cheese. Nut cheese is what we did. No I offense. Think I out this morning because that way at least I'm more zen right now. <laughs> no offense says hearts and kisses. Trey writes up and Chris and I left a super A contribution, which means it's always appreciated on the couch. Chris and I, why would you do that? I know. Chris and I, I love you. There's 20 people currently watching on the Rockfin. Let's like, What's share. Up, let's get it out there. We need an open society platform like Rockfin where we're allowed to speak the truths. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today. And you know our corporate overlords are not going to like us talking about it, fam. Uh, no. They're going to get mad at us. And we have four segments today. The fourth one will be on Rockfin only. Mm -hmm. So like, share. You don't even have to sign up for a free account now. You can just actually click the link and watch. However... If you love us and you love what we're doing, please go over to Rockfin, follow us, uh, and share it out there and share it out loud and proud because it's important that we build this platform that allows us to speak our minds and give you guys the truth. Uh, and thank you to all our patrons out there who showed the love, and thank you for all these super rate contributions. And if you can't contrib contribute fin financially, the, the liking and sharing means that much to us. It really does. And because we're nothing without you, our audience, who's kept us going and done so much for us. I know I'm getting all like touchy and emotional, fam, but we got some serious stuff to talk about. Shall we dive on in? Uh, Shan't we dive in? Okay, we can. I mean, I can spend more time kissing our no. audience's hearts and minds if we want. You know? No, I would. I would like you to stop. Okay, but that would that would be preferable. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, just so you know, fam, George Bush is holding a fundraiser for Dick Cheney, and and um. We were arguing about what what is this? Is this a simulation? I feel like we're living in a simulation. I feel like this is the worst timeline uh, every day. There's just something more ridiculous. And it's and, and, you know, Steve blames the marmot that got into the hydrogen collider. And I'm beginning to think he's right. I don't know. You know, the hydrogen collider is a very, very easy to just just annoy contraption. Like you, you do something wrong and it just destroys the whole mechanism of the entire universe so i think you know that's what happened and i haven't even watched the latest rick and morty episode but i feel like i sound like rick right now yeah. but but don't yeah. you think that though we also need to focus on before we get to the first subject and be really quick about it yeah we can always look about how we got in there the fucking marmot did what he had to do it spun us <laughs> off we need to talk about where we're going that's Absolutely. most important the right solutions. now. And there's a lot of people who mm -hmm. are bringing forth solutions. I'm still holding to the fact and the hope that the aliens will come and give me the Do robot suits, right? And let me go wreak havoc on these motherfuckers. But if that doesn't happen... The Anunnaki are coming back, according to Johnny. What do we do moving forward? That is the question. Yes. And Yes, nobody's going to come save us. I, I disagree with Pasta there. Maybe you're being hopeful and optimistic. I don't think anybody but ourselves is going to save us, so we're going to have to figure that out. I don't want them to save us. I want them to give me the mechanism to save humanity, and that's <laughs> killing these fucking oligarchs <laughs> that are just, they don't give a shit about us. They treat us like cattle, and we're going to yeah. explain that today. Well, what's going on, really? We Literally. live in a crazy, sick society, and to see every day fucking Joe Biden going on TV saying shit, and, you, and you're just, it blows my mind. And when people were talking about, oh, but Trump, but Trump, and saying, at least Biden's still better than Trump, because that's what they're saying right. in the fucking mainstream, is beyond sick, and you need to be evaluated in your mind for what the fuck you're thinking. Right. Johnny has this... Oh, oh, yes. The weasel apparently shuts down the world's most powerful particle collider. Yes. That happened. 2016. Yeah, 2016. <laughs> Wow. We could have had Bernie Sanders. We could have had something different. 2016. What? Something fucking happened. Once again, Steve Poikinen is right. Just like he was right about the conspiracy being the, the lemurs. Just like he's right about a lot of things. What yeah. the fuck? Steve Poikinen is magic. It says engineers investigating the mishap found the charred remains of a furry <laughs> creature near a nod through power cable. <laughs> Sorry, guys, we the had to pull this up. The remains of a furry creature. Oh. No. Poor weasel. No. Well, 
I know we said we could have had Bernie Sanders, but the Bernie Sanders is a different Bernie Sanders I, today. That's what I'm saying. saying. We're the, in another the collider is the, yeah. <laughs> and I understand that too, so as well. And But that's also going to get into one of the topics today too as well as we talk about Congresswoman Gabbard. Yes, oh, yeah. Congresswoman. Oh, We're going to get yeah. into that and stuff oh, yeah. like that. And, you know, I've already made my thoughts known and I'm going to continue to do it. I think Oof. I took the first shot. Johnny took a shot now too as well. Um I want to say right now to a lot of the people who follow us who are very big supporters of the Congresswoman, I still love you. It's still one of the best things that ever came about with the Tulsa people that I met in that kind of community. Uh, and even though I feel that Tulsi's changed, that doesn't mean my love for you has changed. I'm still very proud and happy that I met a lot of you and that a lot of you are in my life. And when I get to call some of you on the other side of the country and speak to you, uh, I'm very happy that Tulsi was Tulsi. And I'm very happy that Bernie was Bernie. Uh, we're sitting here today because of the Bernie movement. We probably would have never really even kind of talked had it not been for Bernie. Um, right. Somebody was like, do you know Fee? I'm like, yeah, I think I have saw her once or briefly met her. That was the soy sauce story, right? Um, no, that wasn't true. Like, I barely, barely even knew. But somebody's like, you need to talk to Fee. She's into Bernie, too, and she's as deep as you guys. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, well, half the shit you're talking about, I don't even know what you mean, but it sounds good. I'm like, well... <laughs> I'm going to go talk to Fiorella, and here we are today. Here's your brother, you know, what we're doing in life. So very thankful of the, about those moments, but it's very important. the fucking weasel. <laughs> the Jesus weasel. Christ. It's very important to analyze what is now and where people are and kind of build a separate path moving forward, a path that's better for us, humanity, and everyone else. So. Exactly. All Around right. Um, Marion Williamson. Now uh, let's get on to it. See what I get, people? Uh, See? Come on. Are you serious? That okay, uh, but okay. So lay it out, Gandhi. Come on. This is fucking Gandhi. Uh, so the Biden Harris administration is allowing the treatment of these Haitian immigrants, right? These people that are coming that came into the country, and is allowing them to be treated very, very similarly to slaves or or people that are just being extremely mistreated. You know, we've seen the kids in the influx facilities slash cages, right? We've seen all that. We've seen how they've treated a lot of these immigrants. Now, this is nothing new, right? America, this this is just more exposure as to who America is. But let's start at the beginning. So about a few days ago, I believe it was about uh uh, there was a situation that that happened. People were coming back. But I just want to put out this tweet as to what it looks like right now. So this is uh, from Ava DuVernay, Haiti, the only nation on earth to free itself from the shackles of slavery. And that continues to pay the price for that act as the entire world regards it with untold scorn and shame. And you guys can see the pictures there of of what it looks like right now at the border, particularly in Texas. Um what what is she alluding to pasta she's alluding to the fact that haiti was they're the uh, only nation to do that to free themselves to have a revolution right. to say we're not going to be enslaved anymore the other countries we talk about the united states england whatnot they eventually through policy said we can't do this anymore because right. it was so ridiculous but haiti was one of those countries who did it themselves in fact the only country to do it themselves and that's something that uh, Hugo Chavez would always praise the Haitian people and why he gave them some of the riches of the oil they right. found because of what they gave to humanity and society, the way they stood up and freed themselves. But for doing so, fam, the West and the elites and the oligarchs through deep-rooted white supremacy have said, uh-uh-uh, we're going to punish you, we're going to fucking strip you of your resources, we're going to make sure you live in poverty. They've actually treated Haiti like a toilet bowl of the fucking right. world. And it was because of this movement when they did free themselves. So this tweet shows Border Patrol mounted on horseback, rounding up Haitian refugees with whips. This is unfathomable, unfathomable cruelty towards people fleeing disaster and political ruin. The administration must stop this. OK, yeah, it's gross to see them doing that. Now, beyond that, what why are they fleeing? Yeah. Right. The, how do you know how many times we've been involved in like backing, uh, you know, neoliberal right wing type of of governments in Haiti overthrowing their democratically elected leaders? I mean, we have been involved in Haiti for decades and that, did, that didn't end there. I mean, look at what just happened now with with the murder of the, the last leader. And now we have the audacity to be like, well, they're just doing their job. A lot of people say, oh, they're just doing their job. You know, they need to get here legally. But what a lot of people on the right miss, the conservatives miss, is that we 
this is on us. We constantly have interfered in countries like Haiti, but in this case, particularly Haiti. And now this this country that was doing a lot better in certain instances, every single time they were, we decided to crush them yet again. So, yes, I'm sorry, but this is on us. Yeah. And that is not speaking from a, a, you know, a liberal virtue signaling perspective. That is speaking from fact. It's our imperialism that causes our regime change wars and our interference is what leads to this mess whether it's from haiti whether it's from central america wherever it's from 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 west asia this is where it leads and that's what we're dealing here the biden administration is just a continuation of the 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 policy on immigration that has existed in the united states for decades yeah. like obviously if this was donald trump you'd see the media spin it a lot oh differently. my god yes they would be crazy johnny in the blue bag is that food i mean i'm thinking about the mindset like what's he holding on to as he's getting whipped and right. whatnot yes yeah, so it's like food i have another thread that actually uh talk speaks on that okay um, so let's see it was um I mean, just think about the mindset. Like, I'm not letting go of the food. that, And they're whipping me. Just think about how impoverished these people are. Right. Well, there was a tweet that said that they were grabbing food with what, whatever little money they had because they were starving there at the border. Mm -hmm. They went uh, back over the border to get uh, some food and then come back through the river. And to then they were whipping them shit, to right? feed their family and shit. Yeah. Jesus yeah and so people you know when i posted something about this i had a bunch of people in the comment section they're not really getting whipped it's just the way the picture looks oh. I'm, I'm like okay really? okay oh yes people who follow me who wow. are more because people follow me as as you know i'll go after the democratic party and stuff and they love it but the moment i go after cops or the border patrol that's that's where they're like no but they're just doing their job and it's like look i'm not gonna argue with you whether the whip actually hit the person or not that's not the fucking point the point is this shouldn't be happening it's 2021 let's treat people with some fucking respect and dignity just because they they're not uh you know they don't have papers doesn't mean that they should be treated in a less than human way and it's all these people that are a lot of them are against the mandates i'm like who do you think is going to be fucking pushing these vaccine passports and mandates other than these people yeah. who by the way australia they can't leave australia so get ready for that you're not going to be able to fucking leave and they're going to be they're going to be enforcing all of this on you just because it's somebody else that you say well they don't have papers well you don't have papers you don't have a vaccine paper. What's going to happen then? I mean, it's hypocrisy. They play team sports, and I'm so fucking sick and tired of seeing it from the cappuccino communists that are okay with Ashley Babbitt getting shot, that are okay with people getting kicked out of hospitals because they're not vaccinated. The same way I see it with the right when it's like, somebody from BLM or somebody that's, you know, that that an immigrant. They, it's like they're their compassion or whatever it is goes out the window there's no logic either it's like no i have my team my team i support cops i support the the border patrols well they're the ones that are going to enforce these draconian laws on you too yeah um i've said this before like what haiti should be right it should be a beautiful fucking island filled with resources that aren't stripped, uh, just making so much profit in tourism to feed their people, to educate their people. Instead, the country is just stripped down to the ruins and people are fleeing like there's no tomorrow. And whose fault is that, right? Why are they fleeing? Why are they doing what they're doing? Because of American imperialism, because of the predator class. That is why. Uh, and, and like you said, fam, they're, they're hitting the Haitians with the whips now. Eventually, they'll be hitting you. Because you don't have papers either. And that's the society they're trying to build. Right. Right. It's <laughs> disgusting. Did you want to show something, Johnny? Uh, well, yeah, just to add to it, you know, according to CNBC, President Biden has used Title 42, which right. uh, uh, <laughs> ja Jackie Pis uh, Pisaki, whatever. Jen Pisaki. Jen, Jen Pisaki. Pisaki. Jackie Pisaki. Uh, <laughs> Title like 42 Jackie. to expel 690,000 people, 250,000 more people than President Trump. What? Which, and Biden's like what? In his first year, right? Yeah. yeah. So, not even. <laughs> he's, got, yeah. Yeah, not, he's like seven months in, right? But we have to vote out fast. We're going to move them left. We're going to mitigate damage. We're mitigating damage. So this is from AJ+. Plus. The U.S. removed over 6,000 Haitian asylum seekers from the border at Del Rio. It planned six deportation flights on Tuesday, denying many their legal right to asylum using Trump-era policy. So a man at the border with two children said the U.S. government has no conscience. 
Um, here's another one. DHS says it's investigating images of Border Patrol attacking asylum seekers with whips. Some were attacked while bringing food slash water to Haitians trapped at the border in 104 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the one I was looking for. One man said this treatment they are giving us is racism because of the color of our skin. Uh, that's how they feel on the ground there. The UN condemned the U.S. for deporting hundreds of Haitian asylum seekers without hearings. We are disturbed, is what the U.N. said. The U.S. plans six daily deportation flights to Haiti starting Tuesday. Only some families and unaccompanied children are allowed to wait for hearings. I just want to put it to you for those of you that say that race has no part in this. Would they ever do this to a bunch of Canadians coming across the border? <laughs> would you? Would you? I mean, imagine would you ever seeing see that image? a, a Border Patrol <laughs> agent see that image. whipping a Canadian, holding maple syrup, <laughs> like, like. I, I, I just want to lay it out there. But, do you really think we would ever see that in this fucking timeline? I mean, the only time we're going to see anything like that is maybe with the whole uh, vaccine passports and all of that. That's yeah. that's the only time you're going to see that. But when it comes to immigration, the global South. You know, I know as an immigrant, they fucking the, people from Europe have zero problem coming into this country and leaving this country and coming in and coming out. And people from the global south were not welcome with open arms. The only people that were welcome with open arms were Ted Cruz's people from Cuba. And a lot of these people were escaping Castro because they were the land owning, uh, yeah. you know, aristocracy. They were the oppressors. They were part of the <laughs> oppressive regime. They said, if you come here, yeah. you if you reach if you reach the, the U.S. waters, you'll gain citizenship a lot of latinos grew up with a little bit of like why were they given citizenship when we had to cross the border you know across across the rio grande or, or you know or come here and wait 20, 10 15 20 years to get citizenship i mean that is that is something that and a lot of the people who came in through the maria were extremely white i mean i there's no i mean there's no denying that there's some sort of you know racial element i'm not saying it's the number one driving force but really imperialism is is obviously drastically like the look at the countries we, we ravage and, and pill, pill, pillage you know like it's it's obvious to me yeah. i mean it, you can't deny that right yeah well i think racism is the tool which allows them to keep getting away with a lot of things because a lot of poor white people are saying well they're not doing that to me they're doing to the people who don't have papers who are here illegally and all that shit but they have to realize that they've been they've just been giving a little bit more freedom and eventually right. they'll be coming for them right and that's something i like to talk about all the time because you look away the that they treat these nations where indigenous people of color like haitians are they're it's treated they're treated awfully they're stripped of all their resources what we're doing in africa now and all this situation it's terrible you look at the colonies that have been given a little love and a little freedom they're all the white english-speaking colonies right. australia new zealand whatnot but now you have to realize that they're going to be whipping you soon right right that's the thing you're not realizing and that's why a lot of the reasons why racism exists is to keep people divided and until you realize that they're getting whipped today. You'll be getting whipped tomorrow. We're in this together. We need to be speaking against this treatment. And if you don't, hey, man, you're building your own fucking grave. It's like when Reverend Andy told us. She said, look what they did. They gave the white family $450. They gave the black family $250. You know why? That keeps us divided. And as long as they keep us divided, then they stay in charge. And now we're at a point with this whole fucking situation where, hey, man, <laughs> It's game time. All our lives are on the fucking line. And you better realize that, and we need to come together. We should be condemning this shit right fucking here, right fucking now. And what's the first step? Start building back Haiti. Start really helping it. Don't let the Clintons go in there, oh, rob God. the country fucking blind, leave them in poverty, and leave them in chaos. First things first, empire, reel back, get the fuck out, and let's provide some real help. You don't want people coming here? Let's help them build their society instead of crushing it. Because right. that's what we're doing. We're crushing it. This is disgusting. Did you have another one to show? Or? Yeah, just a couple more slides. It says, many being deported to Haiti have not been back in years and are returning amid political crisis, earthquake, destruction, and gang bonds that has displaced thousands. A man who fled after the 2010 quake deported back with his wife and son said there's no security in Haiti. None. Um, he's using Title 42 to expel asylum seekers without their right to hearings. Uh, Ex-President Trump invoked Title 42 citing COVID-19, but health experts says it has no medical basis. Per CNBC, it was used to expel 690,000 people under Biden, 440,000 people under Trump. 
Uh, so Biden is just continuing the Trump yeah. era policy. Yes, it's all one New big boss, aisle, same as the old boss. Which yep. a lot of progressives were uh, <laughs> telling us to not vote for. Yeah, to mitigate uh, damage. To, to, to not vote for third party. You right. know, uh, and it says about 300 asylum seekers slept on the ground on the Mexico side of the border. Some due to no food at Del Rio. Others fear the U.S. will deport them without asylum processing. Though Mexico is making arrests, is also making arrests. It would be better for us to get killed than to get deported. Uh, that's that a refugee. So. That yeah. That's a fucking refugee. That's right. not an immigrant. That's a refugee seeking asylum. There's our question we talked about beforehand. They're refu fucking G's. If you if you'd rather die than go back to your country because you're probably gonna die anyway, you're you should be given refugee status. The problem is a lot of the the Biden administration is calling people refugees, including the Afghani refugees, without giving them actual refugee status. Uh, they're. You know, if I find a tweet, I'll put it up later. But it really explained from an immigration lawyer how they're doing that. They're just blatantly giving people uh, refugee uh, name in name, but not giving them like the protections that a refugee status would allow. Uh, OK, so I'll go on now. Yes. This is from Redfish. And just to repeat again, you guys have seen now the pictures, but they're basically saying, you know, that these Border Patrol officers were wearing cowboy hats, are whipping Haitian refugees seeking asylum. More than 12,000 Haitian migrants have been entrapped under the Del Rio International Bridge in Texas with no food or supplies for days. And again, the weather is over 100 degrees there. So, I mean, that just shows you I thought it was everything. a movie, fam. I thought they were remaking Django in fucking ma modern times as people were ru running around with cowboy it hats, really whipping people. It looks like Django I mean, it, it's ridiculous. So it says when they tried to cross the Rio Grande River to bring back food, the refugee camp on the U.S. side to the refugee camp on the U.S. side, they were met with border security. Haitians are escaping a major earthquake and powerful storm, which hit the country last month, in addition to rising political instability. Again, yeah. they're not getting any help uh, with the hurricane. They're politically unstable. Hey, and it sucks because Haiti, hey, Haiti is one of the worst hit <laughs> islands when it comes to hurricanes, too. Yeah. Like, and it's crazy because a lot of people don't know they share the land with Dominican Republic. Yep. And Dominican Republic isn't, isn't you know, in great shape either, but it's definitely in better shape than, Haiti. than Haiti. And and they keep it that way, you know, the empire, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I know a lot of people have an opinions about why they keep it that way. I don't even want to get down that fucking rabbit hole, but... It is just an impoverished country, and it's kept that way. It's kept destabilized for a fucking reason. So there's more pictures that Johnny can show. It's just the uh, pictures from the Border Patrol by the bridge. That's where they are under the bridge. There's a little fence. They're just watching them. You know, it, it really, it's, it's just gross. Like, is that water and stuff? Like, yeah. yeah. Like, I honestly, like, people shouldn't be treated like this in any way, shape, or form. I don't care what color you are. I don't care. Like, it's just wrong. Um, and then I really wanted to get into the history of the U.S. policy towards Haiti. And this is from Madame Buchmann, who is uh, from Haiti, and she always posts a lot of things. So first, Johnny, if you scroll to her tweet that she's quoting, let's go there. She says, fact, every Haitian refugee crisis has been a direct result of U.S. imperialism. Yep. In 1991, the U.S. overthrew Haiti's populist president, Jean Bertrand as Aristide, and the CIA unleashed a death squad on his supporters, forcing over 50,000 to flee and interned at Guantanamo Bay. So you guys can see the pictures that she posted from there. Um, like I said, this is on us. This is nothing new. We have been doing this for decades now. Um, and then she said what she quote tweeted was U.S. policy towards Haitian refugees has always been racist. The CIA unleashed a death squad, F-R-A-P-H, on Haitians after overthrowing Haiti's president in 1991. And tens of thousands of Haitians that fled the terror were interned at Gitmo while white Cuban refugees were welcomed. This is exactly what I was talking about. Cubans, the favored immigrants. The Cubans are coming again. Nearly a thousand of them in the past two months. They are arriving illegally. Some of them in good sized boats dropped on the beaches of the Florida Keys in semi-professional smuggling operations. Unlike the thousands of desperate Haitians who have taken to the sea since the fall of John Bertrand's government in September of 1991, all fleeing Cubans are deemed by the United States government to be political refugees. The Haitians mostly are classed as economic refugees and many have been forcibly returned, a policy that is still being argued in the courts. Guys, I mean, I, I know this because I, you know, I, I lived in Miami for a long time and I knew a lot of Cubans and I, you know, and it, it's this, this is something, you know, a lot of Latinos are a little, we're a little bit like, 
but why <laughs> don't we get the same treatment? And, you know, and and it's, you know, and then you breed kind of this animosity towards people that shouldn't be having animosity towards each other. That's the thing. And it really sucks. And, and again, it's it's a favorable treatment. They talk about the naturalization services that uh, instead of being sent to a detention center, the new arrivals were allowed to stay with relatives and turned it over into volunteer groups. The New York Times reported that they gave both political repression and economic privation as motives for their flight. Almost all Haitians who fled during the past year said they did so because of political repression, yet the State Department rejected their explanations and unilaterally labeled them as economic refugees. Cubans, even those who admit their reason for leaving was economic, are free to stay and are not detained. Mm -hmm. So this is a hypocrisy towards Cuba. Someone fleeing the last left-wing dictatorship in the hemisphere is automatically a political refugee and is welcomed here. Someone fleeing a murderous right-wing dictatorship is an economic refugee and is promptly shipped back home. Do you, there it is. Do you see the, the, the psychological warfare there too as well? Yeah. Oh, it's an economic. They're leaving for better. They're leaving their shithole countries. Right. What Donald Trump said yep. to come here because they want to benefit off of what the United States has built. That's what the way they right. frame it and that a lot of right. people's like, well, why can't they do this in their own country and stuff? You know what I'm saying? Why do they got to come over here? We can't even take care of our veterans. And yet we're going to give money to a, a, a political, economical refugee from Haiti. That's bullshit. And that's right. what they're going to say. Right. And that's, that's what why they, they frame this shit. That's why they post. motivate this shit. <laughs> Meanwhile, we've been fucking with their government for so long. We've been keeping them disabled for so long. And yes, the blood is on our fucking hands. It's our responsibility. I can never understood this, Stannis, when it comes to conservatives, who their main ideology was about individual responsibility. Why don't we take responsibility for what our empire does? Why do we twist it and turn it and act like it's what their choices they're making over there as a result of them coming here when it's our choices that we're making here as a result why they have to flee to come here? I could never understand it. Um, I wanted to show this video of this young man at the Texas border who was deported to Haiti on Sunday. He said he was mistreated by American officials, confined to a freezing room for six days, and was not allowed to bathe or brush his teeth the whole time. So let's watch. America is the biggest enemy of Haitians. Because we don't have to do what we do, we're going to get out of Brazil. We're going to get out of 11 countries. And Colombia is going to get out of it. C'est un bagage l'eau sorti ou mandé on dit comment on fait passer là parce que c'est un vrai mort à passer c'est dans danger simplement à passer. Les nous rivé au banou un petit cap, il est fermé nous. Mandé depuis mardi. Américain prend il est fermé, il y a un côté, il est fermé non chambre frise. Nous connait petit chasseur. Nous connait petit papier bagage qui clairé, qui clairé, il y a qu'on mettait sous gâteau là. C'est lié au banou pour nous couvrir chambre là ou va gain droit sorti là-dedans. Ou pour te boire, ou pour te parfum. Yo prend tout ou pour te rad. Marche bel rad homme. Yo prend tout yo jete yo. M'pa konn si jete yo jete yo parce que peuple ça son peuple qui vraiment méchant. Yo pa ban nou droit. Ata si yo pa men bon droit pour brosser mes amis. Yo pays qui dit celle qui grande puissance. Ka ki vle faire la loi dans monde là. Ou pa ban me droit même pour brosser tandis que m'pa faire un crime. Je ne sais pas si les gens sont dans le pays, si c'est un crime, je ne sais pas si je prends toute punition. Je ne si je jamais bien, jamais brossé. Je ne sais jamais brossé. Je pense à Kamala Harris qui parle de gens qui ont pris la même route pour venir ici. Elle a dit, ne venez pas ici. À quel point nous allons regarder à nous et dire que l'Amérique Empire, le Western Empire, ou ce que vous voulez dire, je ne sais pas qui est en train de faire ça you know, these oligarchs, is going to lead to these situations where these people have no choice but to flee. When are we going to look inside the mirror and say, we have to take responsibility for this? If, you, if you're a Trumper or a patriot or whatever you call yourself and you don't want so much migration coming here, then reel back the empire. Stop yeah. making excuses for us doing what, we, what we're doing worldwide. And stop talk, bringing up veterans because neither Trump nor Biden have given two shits about veterans. Yes. They're still warmongering pieces of shit sending more people out there to die. Bush is fucking having a fundraiser for Dick Cheney. That's how far we've come along yeah. <laughs> in fighting the war machine. I mean, this is it's disgusting. Like they, they will never veterans are right now out homeless in the streets. That's where they're fucking are. Are they helping them? No, they're just blaming each other, saying, oh, this is the Democrats fault. No, this is the Republicans fault. That's all they're fucking doing. They, right. I, they're they not yeah. actually helping the American people here right now. And by the way, this guy had to take the, the route. So many of them are coming from Brazil and up 
up from Brazil towards past Colombia and then going down that that route up to Central America and up. That is how bad they want to fucking leave their country. Yeah. That tells you that it's not just because they're lazy or because they have the because no, no, because they fucked it up. No, it's because there's serious unrest and they need to get out and they don't see a way out other than physically leaving where they're at. Yeah. And that's something that any human being who who feels that way should be allowed to do because the moment they 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 stop you from traveling i want to see how quickly you 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 have a problem with oh that. yeah there are people just waiting on those routes just to see there what what do you got take every prized possession you have for you anything worth of value you know they're just going to take it from you they might rape women they might do so many awful things on that route up here that it's disgusting and i and, and i just want to reiterate right now too when you talked about the veterans and stuff like that when are you people going to learn that these people aren't any different than us in a lot of ways you're their pawns they're using your soldiers your people as pawns to go fight their wars when are you going to realize that shit that we're all being fucking played Against each other. Yes. While they get away with it. While they get away scot fucking free. We have more in common with these refugees than Way we do more. with the oligarchs. Way more. Um, so Wake up, people. This is from Maddox Bookman as well. She's uh, She said a Haitian journalist just revealed that migrants deported to Haiti today were chained by the hands and waist and feet. And the U.S. ordered its puppet prime minister, D. Ariel Henry, we've talked about mm -hmm. this before, to keep all journalists away from the plane so the word does not wow. get out. I haven't seen any pictures of this, but if somebody has a picture, please send my way, our way. Um, it's disgusting. But I mean, I, you know, again, like... This is this is terrible. This is terrible. And again, that is the U.S. puppet. This is what the Haitians were saying for a long time that the U.S. just put in their puppet. Um, this is from Ajamu Baraka. He said the U.S. treatment of Haitians is not anti-Haiti. It's it's normalized white supremacy from settler colonial state that has never valued non-European life. Biden and Democrats are racist, as is the U.S. Look at the mobilization against China. Isn't race the appeal? By the way, I don't know. We haven't even talked about this, but we have a bunch of ships <laughs> and bases in the south china sea now like we're literally surrounding china with with military but china is the enemy right china is so dangerous look at how dangerous they are we they, how dare they be a landmass surrounding our our military bases yeah yeah yeah, china. yeah. like get you know it's fucking ridiculous so what is the biden administration doing about this right uh, so four days ago, as I said, the U.S. decided to expel Haitians from the border and fly them to Haiti. OK, so the, the U.S. decided to do that. It, the Biden administration uh, plans a wide scale expulsion of Haitian migrants from a small Texas border city by putting them on flights to Haiti starting Sunday. So this is what's been happening. This is what you've been seeing. And um, this is, of course, a response to thousands who suddenly crossed the border from Mexico and gathered under the small bridge. OK, so it's going to take about five to eight flights a day. That's what they were trying to do. So that's where this is coming from. And now this is a tweet from Rob the Rich. You guys can see uh, Johnny showing you some pictures, but he has this video. You're watching 10,000 refugees from Haiti making their way across the Rio Grande, seeking asylum in the U.S., the country. That stole Haiti's wealth. That stole its democracy. Biden's response to the refugees resume deportation flights to Haiti. So uh, when you get a chance, Johnny, there's a video of them uh, crossing. Uh, and you can see it in the, yeah, right there. It's kids, too. People with their families. So... That's what's happening. That's the results. So there's an investigation underway, right? Uh, so <laughs> Homeland Security, it's like the, the, the meme with the Spider-Man pointing at the yeah, other Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Homeland Security is, uh, is investigating. I'm just going to yeah. just put this up for the purposes. They're investigating. They're launching an investigation on, you know, the treatment of the Haitian immigrants and... Um, <laughs> Kamala Harris is the uh, the Border Patrol immigration czar, right? She's the one in charge. No, I, it's hilarious. Kamala the Har <laughs> Kamala the cop Harris is in charge of this, which is absolute. This is the fucking weasel because this is like 
She is Kamala the cop Harris. She couldn't even win her own district, her own state, because she's put people in jail for marijuana, for bullshit, right? And uh, she's the one that's in charge of this. So she had something very wonderful to say. She said, what I saw depicted about those individuals on horseback treating human beings the way they were is horrible. Human beings should never be treated this way. As a member of the Western Hemisphere, we've got to support some very basic needs. But simultaneously, the Biden administration gave the okay to do this. Do you not see what I'm saying here? So she's doing some sort of PR. Uh, they do this you know, all the time. Yeah. So yeah. let's hear what she says. But really, just so you know, they gave the order. What I saw depicted about um, those individuals on horseback treating human beings the way they were is horrible. And um, I fully support what is happening right now, which is a thorough investigation into exactly what is going on there. Um, but human beings should never be treated that way. And I'm deeply troubled about it. The whole point is that we have to understand Haiti. I mean, talk about a country that has just experienced so much uh, tragedy that has been about natural disasters. And we really have to do a lot more to recognize that as a member of the Western Hemisphere, we've got to support some very basic needs that the people of Haiti have to get back up <sighs> yeah so that's what she's saying but how, how she's in charge of this the biden administration gave the okay so Fam, how long are we gonna let these people play this game with them yeah. when they say some shit actions speak louder than fucking words ladies and gentlemen remember when you were told that as a kid so stop with the fucking looking at the bullshit when they say some shit and they go and they virtue signal and stuff they're not, they're, they're responsible for this. She should be apologizing, not saying, acting like, oh yeah, uh, I'm the voice of reason here and this is terrible. We're going to have, we should investigate this. Uh, lady, you're the one who's in fucking charge. You're the one who was supposed to be the borders are. Remember that? And then you didn't even go to the fucking border. Show some actions. Get your ass down there. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just. And you look I, at these I, pictures, I, it's terrible. And what's the plan? Just keep going with the deportation. They right. spent all this time and effort to get away from that country. And I, I'm, now imagine them going back and being handed over to these fucking crazy people that's, in a destabilized that's country. What they're they're, they're going to yeah. be butchered alive. So Christine Olivo attended a uh, protest. This is from Trisha Ahmed. Uh, Christine Olivo, an immigrant from Haiti who is running for Congress, speaks on the march at the March for Citizenship and says her cousin is at the border. Title 42 is what the Biden administration is using to deport Haitian migrants. Title 42 can be abolished, said Olivo. Exactly. So how dare Harris come out and act like, oh, I'm so above this. This is wrong. Knowing that they could easily abolish this policy, let these people in, give them asylum, treat them as a real refugee status and figure it out. I, you know what I mean? But they're not. They're just doing the whole pr management like so, oh i feel bad blah 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 okay that's it moving on that's the thing it could be abolished they don't have to continue that that's a trump era policy yep. that they're continuing can you just see the latte liberals and the cappuccino communists did you see kamala on tv she was great she looked presidential she was awesome she's going to be the president i'm glad she's handling the situation right. over here bullshit you fucking people are just ridiculous at this fucking point and this robot human, fam, that was a that was from a march, right? That yeah. was a march. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a march on yesterday. Yesterday. And that was from a march. So Christina Lebo was out there out in D.C., I believe. Yeah. Yeah. DC. It was a welcome back Congress. Huh. Welcome back. Doing fucking nothing. So. Um. So. See, but the <laughs> thing is, is that we citizenship now. I get it, but where's the end imperialism sign? Right. That's what right. I want to see. Because right. he, th once again, we can't have Band-Aid solutions, and that's what these liberals right. do. They sit there with their cappuccino and their fuck. We need to give them citizenship, but why is this happening now? Why is it going to continue right. to happen? It's going to continue to happen If we don't reel everywhere. back the empire, it's, it's going to continue to happen. Right. That's We have to do that. We have to do it first because it's the act of stopping. Not doing anything. It's just stopping. Immigration is directly, directly tied to imperialism directly i mean it is the literally it. The, the root <laughs> cause of it 100 percent. so um saki is literally one of the the most like robotic <laughs> just awful people 
Um, and I'm glad people get her name wrong all the time. But this is what she said on CBS Morning. She said, we have to implement our laws. So let's look at what she said. Into that, people may be eligible for that. But right now, we also have to implement our laws uh, at the border. We also want to protect people, both in that community, but also migrants. One of the challenges, as we're all facing a pandemic here, is the gathering of so many people. We're still implementing Title 42, which means that we are going to send people out of the country who come in uh, as we implement that. A, a COVID safety protocol. Exactly. But d did you say oh. that it's possible that that extension that applies to Haitians already here could apply to those coming across the border well, now. Tony, it's already been extended uh, because of the turmoil on the ground. It was earlier this summer. That's something that the Secretary of Homeland Security and Secretary of State do look into. But again, as we look to this, the, the photos, uh, not just the ones you referenced, but, but of all of these families and people under the bridges, we wanted to also take steps to implement our laws and to protect a lot of them from the spread of COVID as well. You know, there's a lot of incoming, Jen, at, at the White House these days. What will be the Okay, so that, people may be the COVID fucking the co right. Uh, the so COVID it's okay excuse. to to keep this policy, this Trump era policy that she neglects to mention, uh, because of COVID. Do you see what they're doing? All oh, because we there's just it's COVID. Yeah, so we have to implement vaccinated. our laws. You know, they're 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 not sophisticated. They're dirty. They're, exactly. COVID. It's COVID. We have to we have to implement our laws. Protect. It's COVID. Do you see how this is why you can't pick and choose? Either you're against fucking authoritarian crackdowns and, and fascism or you're not like this they're gonna use covid for every little fucking thing they can they're using it to to uh allow themselves to have these fucking imperialist racist policies on these people they're they're using covid for that they're using the mandates and passports to do the same thing to the working class as well this is what i'm talking about here we have to implement our laws that are now extended because of COVID. So sorry, they get to be sent back because COVID. No, 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 no. Fuck you. You don't get to do that. You don't get to fucking do that at all. She's fucking awful. I hate her. Oh, my God. Um, what world that, that goddamn <laughs> marmot who got in the machine? I'm telling you. It's a fucking marmot. So um, just to make you guys even more upset, this is Joe Biden in 1994. Johnny's birth year. <laughs> uh, he said, if Haiti, God awful thing to say, if Haiti just quietly sunk into the Caribbean or rose up 300 feet, it wouldn't matter a whole lot to our interests. All right. If Haiti, a God awful thing to say, if Haiti just quietly sunk into the Caribbean or rose up 300 feet, it wouldn't matter a whole but lot in terms of our interests. If Haiti. But that's the truth. And but that's what they that's what they is. do. They keep you so yep. consumed what's going on with the United States within our neighbors and everything that's going on there that we don't pay attention to our actions outside of the borders. In fact, not only do we do not pay attention, we OK them. You know what I'm saying? Instead of condemning them, we're like, all right, you know, we must go over there. There must be a dictator. We might as well remove that dictator. He's an awful guy. Let's do that and stuff. No, stay out of people's back fucking yard. Let them prosper on their own. Remember when we asked Rachel Brunke, how many of these people are coming because of U.S. imperialism? She goes, past that, I have to say it's close to 99% yeah. because these people want to stay there. But they yeah. don't want to live in a fucking area that's a war zone where they have all these funded factions that are killing people and fighting against the government. Where the they, politicians aren't representing them. Exactly. Because and they want to stay corrupt. there and prosper in their own country. But yeah. When your husband's been killed and your neighbors are dying and now you got children, it's not safe for them to be there. And you've already lost a child. There's authoritarian shit like big time police everywhere. Uh, so, <sighs> by the way, that is who Joe Biden is. That is who Joe Biden always has been. He hasn't changed. But it's also the American people. Of course. We need to change. We need to wake up. We, it, it, there is some truth to what he's saying there. We need to care what we do out there. Right. Well, we need to care. He's not really saying we need to care. He's saying that they don't pay, they don't matter to our interests. They don't. They don't. Um, but, but yeah, we should. we yeah. need to care. So um, I just wanted to show the hypocrisy because you know, remember we kind of touched on this. Remember when people were like, we have to fight fascism. Well, this is a Dina Menzel, you know, great voice. But uh, what a relief. My son just hugged me and said, mommy, no more kids in cages. Tears of joy and tears of sadness. This is when Joe Biden was the, <laughs> the president. <laughs> Um, and <laughs> so that was a tweet that I hated. Right. And then she put up these pictures. 
Uh, and then <laughs> show your kids the love and support they need with the comfort of Rice Krispies. <laughs> I mean, this is just shit lib hypocrisy, right? Are, I want to know where these people are at right now with this. Where Are they calling out Joe Biden and their favorite uh, female woman of color warrior mm, president cop Harris? Are they are they going to call them out or are they going to be like, well, it could be worse if it was Trump. It's better than Trump. That's what they're going to say. They're go that's what they are saying. Well, it's still better than Trump. So That's their language. That's what they got to say. And remember the, uh, you meet the new boss? Same as the old boss. You better believe it. And, uh, Same clan. And uh, I, I made this post also as uh, this is what the lesser of two evils looks like. You know what I'm saying? And then, yeah. And then uh, somebody in, in commented under there, there's a reason why Richard Spencer, white supremacist, supports Biden. We have moved forward over time. Racism would, that would be acceptable among Republicans 30 years ago is no longer okay. The race hatred has gone from mainstream to fringe today at the spare of both parties. So I said in this comment, I was like, progressives, wake up, stop capitulating to the Democratic Party and the establishment. We had so many progressives shaming us for voting third party and not voting for Joe Biden, with their biggest issue being the immigration problem, trying to shame us into voting for right. the lesser of two evils. Now that argument is dead and gone. If the false promise for $15 minimum wage, Medicare for all, forgiving student loans, etc. didn't already change your mind, this issue should. Mic drop. Yep, exactly. You should have used the drop instead of the drop, word drop. There's a teardrop. Fam. No. But yes. No. The, and then, no, and then you could have put a boom right below. You it. shouldn't have used. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, breaking uh, about an hour, uh, two hours ago, the UN has warned that the mass deportations of Haitians by President Biden could violate international law. They so we'll do. see. We'll see what happens. I don't know if the UN will ever do anything. You know. No. They, they always say. They shit. constantly say that it violate things that we do violate international law, but they seem to think themselves powerless. Uh, when the they could all this. unite as right. all countries and, and be like, no. Stand up to the fucking bully. I'm asking you as an American to do that. Like, stand up against the bully. Like, for once. Uh, Bubblegum Do says, Haiti, can we say Clinton Foundation? Yep. Pasta is in the driver's seat of the ET supplied uh, mega Godzilla spreading democracy to the oligarch predators is a happy thought. Thank you, Bubblegum Douche. That's awesome. We love you. James Stark, thank you for the super rate contribution. It is always appreciated on the couch. And what the Clinton Foundation did, fucking evil. Yeah. Fucking evil. Fucking Wanted evil. to keep that country destabilized. Wanted to do it. That's what the empire does. Uh, Lucky Burrito A&M, no wonder the U.S. has 5% of the population and takes 65% of the antidepressants <laughs> in the world. It's true. <laughs> God damn. So true. <laughs> <laughs> we have to ignore the horrors for the belief of freedom, fam. It's all about freedom. On a lighter note, we love you. Thank <laughs> you for spreading truth. Leo sends his love to you all. Remember, Aww. you can always watch Leo drumming. Aww. Steve Cutler and I are streaming music later. Hope to see you all there. Where are you streaming it on? Is it on? Is today a slow news day or something? Or where are you streaming it? I'd love to be there later on. Leo playing the r drums is like the best thing to watch. Oh, like, dude, Leo's so face. Cool. Just like seeing him. Oh, I want to cuddle with Leo. Hashtag, I want to cuddle with Leo. Aram, thank you for the super rate contribution. It is always... Aram, why do you do that to me? Appreciate it on the couch. And James Starks, thank you so much. There's no Leo. I can't squeam Leo. You, you see, this is why. Who told you to take Leo out of this room? Hold on a second. Why is it doing that? Go there. No, it's just sure. not all up right. To date. Yeah, just. Uh, all right, guys. So this next section, pasta, mm -hmm. Johnny, mm -hmm. you're gonna wanna. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. we're we're gonna get a lot of pushback from the people who are, you know, I here's the thing. Stop standing and being sycophants to any politician. Hold all politicians accountable. Politicians will be politicians. You know, I, I went after Bernie many times and now it's time to hold Tulsi Gabbard accountable for the things she's been saying and doing. And this isn't the first time. This has been now a few incidents she has been doing. Yeah, yeah. Didn't say a word about the the Israel uh, attacking Palestine and, and killing all these all these kids. Yep. People were saying, oh, but she's in a post. She can't make you know, she can't say things and blah, blah, blah. She made other posts about other things um, and she could say something now. She's no longer and she hasn't. So. That's that. Even going back to her time before she left office, too, as well, the H.R. 666, I believe it was, mm -hmm. when it came to giving the forces that may be 
right to remove people from the family to get a virus under control. Yeah. That's another thing we have to talk about, too, as well. We kind of turn the blind eye and say, well, this is Tulsi Gabbard's kind of like uh, Dustin Hoffman from the movie Outbreak moment where she just wants to secure it down, get the virus under control for the benefit of the people. <laughs> You, you said that. I didn't say that. I was like, what I'm the saying fuck? a couple other older people with me online <laughs> said the same excuse. No, what I'm saying is that people who follow Tulsi let her military right, let her mindset as an excuse right. to, for her to do to have these reasons and thoughts, and that is not acceptable anymore. No. And with the way it's this is right. coming about, it's definitely not acceptable. It's crossing the shit line, and we'll talk about it. So yeah, okay. So Johnny made a tweet. Johnny tweets, and I'll let you. Talk about your tweet. I said, LOL, when asked about the lack of accountability on generals, that was Tucker's first question. Is black, uh, mm -hmm. What do you think about the lack of accountability on generals? You hear it. Tulsi says Islamist jihadist ideology is the greatest threat we are facing in this country and then suggested a targeted approach using airstrikes and special forces. And I'm like, when did we tra time travel back to 2002 when like people were saying the same shit, right? Like, this is the greatest threat in that we're facing in this country, right? And it's like, that's not the greatest threat this country is facing right now. Well, no. can, I, can I say something too really quick before we play it? It's a 180 from what she stood for. The right. reason why we stood for Tulsi Gabbard is like, we need to end these wasteful regime change wars. Regime change wars is more about going over and bombing a country and just removing their leadership. It's the CIA planning factions that turn the country against each other, like funding these jihads and all these other groups. She always focused on our part. What is the U U.S. empire doing? If we stop this, then that won't be such a great threat anymore. Now she's doing the exact opposite, saying jihadist, Islamist ideology is the number one threat. What the hell is this? Where is this coming from? This is not, like you said, did we travel back to 2002 when planes went into the building in 2001 and we were always going, oh my God, what the fuck? We need to stop this. No, we, she supposedly recognized the American empire as the problem. Now she's saying the exact opposite. Right. It's crazy. Right. That's the key point here. It's, you know, talking about the U.S.'s role in in what's going on in in the world. It's the imperialism, the foreign policy, the, the regime change wars, all of that. That includes drone strikes. Drone strikes. Drone strikes have a, a kill rate of about ninety percent. Like, I mean, they, like, they kill a lot of civilians. Like, so, uh, Johnny, you have the full video though, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, so we're gonna play the full video. <laughs> we're gonna s start and stop it. Um, but we wanted, we thought it was important to play the whole thing. Honestly, if I was hearing this, I would. In it, I didn't see her voice, or I didn't hear her voice, or didn't see her face. I would wonder which neocon is speaking because some of the things she was saying were ve very, very much uh, pa seemed pandering to a certain demographic. Yeah. So, uh, all right, Johnny, go ahead. Told us that a drone strike had killed. So for weeks, the Biden administration told us that a drone strike had killed a group of ISIS K terrorists, whatever that is, in Kabul. And there were secondary explosions that proved they were suicide bombers. But they were lying, forced by the New York Times to admit it. They've now conceded they killed a number of innocent people, including children. Here's the interesting part. Mistakes happen. But in this case, no one in the Pentagon has been punished for this mistake or for lying about it. We thought it'd be interesting to see what Tulsi Gabbard thinks about this. She's a former member of Congress from Hawaii. She served in Iraq as a member of the Hawaii Army National Guard. She's still serving the country in the military. She joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks so much for coming on. So you Thanks, get to lie, I mean, this will not shock you because you've seen it so much, but you get to lie about the loss of human life, you get caught and nothing happens to you? What kind of system is that? Real quick, I'm pausing it because I just want to emphasize that the question that Tucker's asking there is that he's talking about the generals. He's saying you get to lie. What kind of system is that? Talk about the system or, you know, what do you think about the system? And yeah. let's hear how Tulsi responds. Yeah. I mean, this kind of accountability is critical. I, I want to point out first that anytime there are civilian casualties in war, it is tragic and terrible. Yeah. War is a terrible thing. And, and I think it's important for the American people to understand that Islamist jihadists are continuing to wage war against us. Yeah. And the Islamist ideology, not the same as the religion of Islam, but this Islamist ideology 
which is a political ideology that inspired the terrorist attacks on our country on 9-11, uh, is, is the greatest threat that we're facing right now in this country and the world. It is the foundation of governance of so-called Islamic countries like Turkey and Iran and uh, Saudi Arabia and, and Pakistan. Uh, and it's what's behind the discriminatory policies that they have in these countries against Christians, uh, Hindus, Buddhists, atheists, and others. So as long as these Islamist jihadists are waging war against us, we have to work to defeat them militarily and ideologically. And militarily, we have two choices in how we do that. Number one, we can continue to invade and occupy and nation build in countries around the world, just as we did in Afghanistan at great cost. Number two, we can take a targeted approach using airstrikes, using our special forces to go in and go after these terrorist cells. The reality is that Okay. I think even Tucker is even like, wow. Like, Look at his face. Like, Tucker is even confused. Like, I brought you on here to, to not manufacture <laughs> consent to do this shit. You know what I'm saying? But right. to... She makes Tucker look like the anti-war. Oh, yeah, my so, God. Because later, like, Tucker's like, but getting back to the question or something. Maybe. I know. Yeah, he'll, so, he'll go into it. But yeah. I, I thought this was going to be a moment where she was going to straighten the record. And, and right. f for all you people to know out there, a lot of us here have reached out to the Congresswoman to ask her to come clarify our points to the people who supported her and everything, right? No response back so far. And I'm only going to speak for this group over here and stuff like that. But we've asked her, please come clarify these statements. And instead of going on and clarifying them and straightening out the record, she doubled down on this fucking bullshit here. Even the lumping of fucking Iran yeah. in this situation to me is mind blowing. I, you're lumping Iran with Pakistan, with Turkey and Saudi Arabia? Arabia? Are you fucking kidding me? Right. Are you fuck like seriously? Like what? What are you thinking? Lumping I I Iran right there? Like we're sa we, we sanction Iran? Like we we do all this shit all the time? Like this is I I can't believe that she is lumping. I mean that we created these radical extremists she she completely first of all she doesn't answer his question like he's talking about the casualties and how dare the biden administration and how dare these generals get away with that with no like consequence and she's and she just she, she almost justifies she's, it she's almost justifies, she almost justifies it, it and then goes right into but these you know and and oh, at least she makes a differentiation between the religion and the extremism so at least she did that but, but she come didn't do it on. in her tweet the yeah tweet. she didn't and, do it in her and, tweet and, but and even still the lumping of when we talk about iran when iran is predominantly shia right and as far as these sunnis i mean when you say and it's it's colonizing language it really is when you say Islamist ideology and people still want to people who support her yeah. and want to continue yeah. to support her who are saying no 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 she's not saying she's anti-Muslim she's saying she's against this uh, Islamic ideology which is a political ideology and stuff like well no not really if you say Islamic ideology what are you saying you say Sunnis Wahhabism Shias she's lumping them all together right. and then she goes around and plays the other side of the thing and she lumps Christianity with Buddhist and fucking Hindus Tell me right now, guys, in the modern fucking world, in the modern times, wh what religion has <laughs> killed more fucking people than Christianity? Bill Clinton fucking said that God told him to bomb Kosovo, right? You want to you want to string that along? Why don't you lump that about Christian right. ideology? It's it's ridiculous what she is doing. She's doubling down on fucking stupid, and it's a one hundred and eighty fucking degree turn right she's from not, where she was she's not talking about the u.s involvement and the u.s the u.s like fault in creating these extremists she like if she had said you know i believe that they are a danger to americans and you know i i do understand that the united states helped radicalize these extremists and it's not everybody if she would have said anything like that this reaction wouldn't be what it is now but yeah. she didn't say that she once again made them the enemy they are the enemy and they're your number one your number one concern That's crazy. so uh, uh, tulsi are uh, like are my number one concern and the number one concern of many people here is how the fuck are they gonna pay rent how are they gonna pay their bills how are they gonna you know make ends meet what like are we don't have health care what's going on with with the, this so-called pandemic with these mandates and these that's people's number one concern right fucking now it, 
like countries in Africa, in West Asia, and these extremists there that we helped fucking create, that our state agencies helped create, are not our number one concern. Our number one concern is also the imperialism that that is, the United States is is the the wars and the regime changes that you talked about. You campaigned on right that you you campaigned on these wasteful regime change wars, which includes drone strikes. Hillary Clinton was a huge proponent of the drone strike program. A huge, we have whistleblowers in jail for exposing the drone program. And you're telling me that that this is okay? It just, it's just very, very much a um, neocon type of, of, of mentality. Like I said the other day, I almost felt like John Bolton could have been saying well, this. Well, even Donald Rumsfeld, Donald Rumsfeld realized the fact, he even said one time, hey man, maybe with these policies that we're creating more terrorists than we're killing, he even said that yeah. we're creating more. That's Donald Rumsfeld. <laughs> now you're going to fuck it. I mean, now you're going to say, oh, well, we these are our number one enemies. We Whoa. have to defeat them. That's our number one priority. No, it's fucking bottom fucking line, get out. fam. Get out. It's not. We need to get out. Stop our interference. Mike Period. Ravel. That's our, our, our priority. Just plain get out. That's Mike it. Ravel said and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and bottom line, most men who have joined a jihad didn't join a jihad because Allah told them so. They joined, they became jihadist because a fucking U.S. bomb killed their family yeah. members. Just yeah. remember that. It's not what's in that Islamic ideology that Allah told them to go kill fucking Christians and Hindus and stuff. It was a U.S. bomb dropping on their village, killing their family members, that that's why they became jihadists. And I don't know how the congresswoman has lost sight of that. And she talked about targeted drone strikes, which is like literally like Hillary, like Hillary Clinton, like Bolton, like fucking Obama rhetoric right there. You know, it's terrible. Um, yeah. So let's just continue playing it. That the cost, the cost to the American people, the cost to our troops, the cost to civilians will be far less if we take this very targeted approach to go after these jihadist terrorist cells than if we continue making the very same mistakes that we saw in Afghanistan and other parts of the world of invasion, occupation, and nation building. So in order to do that or to affect any successful military strategy, you have to have competent people running things. And doesn't competence require honesty and accountability? And that's what I see missing here. It's like, you can't, you're not allowed to lie to the public which employs you, are you? The American people deserve honesty. They deserve leaders who lead with integrity and not those who shy away from their own responsibilities to the American people or look for a lower ranking fall guy to take exactly. the hit. The exactly. American people deserve strong leadership that looks out for their best interests and the best interests of our country. When was the last time a general officer or someone, you know, Pentagon level commander in the US military was punished for a mistake, or is it? It's always the corporals, the lieutenants, the captains. Yeah, that, that's that's a really good question, Tucker. And I can tell you from having just come off of active duty, having just come back from a deployment uh, to Africa, there, there's a common frustration uh, among service members when it is someone of a lower rank who takes the hit for decisions yeah. and policies that were made far above their level. It's so dishonorable that that whole way of governing anything, not just the military. It's, it's not really leadership. It. No, it's, it's not, not leadership at it's all. Cowardice. Tulsi Gabbard, welcome back. Thanks so much. That was a very cringy kind of weird kind of second half of the interview. It really was because it's not the integrity which we have a problem with here. Right. This is not about this general lying or that lieutenant lying or telling the truth. Or, it's the policy. Right. It's the policy of being there in the first place. That's what we should be concentrating on. Why are we there to begin with? Why are we funding these jihadist groups? And that's what we've been doing. And now we're getting away from the policy and we're looking at it. Oh, we have to be more systematically doing it properly with the strikes. And we have to have honesty from these generals who are doing it. Right. It's the policy. And that sucks for people getting blamed. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the fact that civilians, including many children and, and women, but especially children, were murdered. And they didn't have to be. We, we so and she didn't at all talk about that. She completely avoided the whole fucking conversation. So it's really, it's really for me, it's it's really telling that maybe, you know, Tulsi did never really talk about about, you know, 
she she was for drone strikes. She she always was. She did say that she was for some drone strikes. So has Bernie Sanders. We have never had anybody. I think Mike was Mike Gravel against drone strikes. Maybe Mike Gravel and Cynthia McKinney were the only ones that were ever against drone strikes. But anybody that was representing in Congress in the last few years has never said no to drone strikes most of them say oh we're for you know a few so that's not surprising what is what is my problem here is her generalizing and broad broad portrayal of the islamist uh jihadist ideology without d differentiating between cultural religious and ethnic groups like pasta said and also with the rhetoric that is reminiscent of post 9 11 rhetoric that got us into this mess in the first place i can say that she's right that we shouldn't be physically going in there at all but drone strikes are not a good substitute. Drone, drone strikes kill more people. More civilians like, than they more, do. Yeah. More civilians in particular, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it's like what Osama bin Laden has said after the towers went down. Like, we never had proof that he was actually behind it. But he even said, you know, they experience a 9-11 every day over there. Every day. Every fucking day. And as long as the empire is over there raping the fucking resources and, and putting whatever puppet government they want in that does their bidding they won't we won't sleep quietly over here you know what i'm saying that's what he said but you know i mean it, that is the issue and you know at this point moment in time i also want to make a pitch to some of the tulsi people out there that are still defending her and whatnot it's like i said in the beginning of the show I'm still, with the information that was provided when I made the vote, I'm still happy I made the vote. Uh, I still think she was the better of all what we have. Uh, and, and I'm very happy to have met you people. And I think that ideology of aloha and love can continue to go on and we can have that. But as far as the congresswoman's concerned, I'm so sorry, but I'm lost right now. She lost me with this, this whole situation here. This is really, really, it's disturbing. Because it's against what she stood for. Our eye was on the American empire, their actions. And what's happening over there is a reaction to our initial right. actions. And that's what Mike Ravel said. How about we just plain get out? That was the solution. We start fucking there. This is the opposite. This is no, we have to just take a different approach about it. Right. We have to take a targeted approach over here. We have to go out because this is the number one problem we're facing as a country is this Islamist ideology. That they want to kill us. This is Anthony Blinken's foreign policy right here. He, he, he was talking about shifting foreign policy from like on the ground, you know, boots on the ground, et cetera, into a more ooh, technology for the borders, technology and drones for foreign policy. She is m mimicking anthony blinken's foreign policy yeah and a lot of people are mad they told me today they were mad at kim they were mad at us me in particular too it was like the fact is that we feel they feel like we're speaking for them because i said everybody who defended tulsi gabba got thrown under the bus they're like well don't speak for me you know what i'm saying all the people who said this oh, kim made a tweet and stuff oh don't speak for everybody okay i won't speak for everybody but i'll speak for myself and a, gr a, a group of us who are very disgusted by this it's still it doesn't change the fact the congresswoman needs to clarify her words. And if this is her clarifying her words, she's shown her true colors and where she's at. And I'm not going along with that plan. I didn't sign up for that fucking plan. I signed up to be an anti-war, anti-imperialist. Let's stop fucking interfering with these countries. Donald Rumsfeld, like I said, he even said, I think we're creating more fucking jihadists that we're killing. Hello? Either you're an anti-imperialist or you're not. Like, they're, they're, like you, yeah. you can't be like, well, only for these people that I really don't like. And a lot of, you know, and a lot of the people that are, like, okay with this are really anti-Muslim. And, like, that's the thing. You can't, you can't do that. Like, sure, there are religious extremists. But, again, Pasta mentioned it. Christian fundamentalists and extremists, especially like a thousand years ago <laughs> waged a lot of wars that killed a lot of yeah. fucking people and to this day there's a lot of extremism in, in the christian ideology too you don't see people going out we have to defeat the there christian extremists yeah that's the that's yeah exactly and tulsi never even mentioned mentioned the word imperialism really in that article i mean in that in that interview and no. uh, actually not a lot in the campaign no, she but she would talk about she would talk about wars regime change and the wars US and, role in it. And the US role in it. She's not talking about the US role in it now. Not anymore, which yeah. is weird. Yeah. And uh, this is the tweet that Kim made. Tulsi Gabbard is making a, all of us who supported her eat crow. I was first disappointed at AOC, then Bernie, then Tulsi, then even Trump. It's been an ever ending cycle of being totally disappointed in politicians who claim to challenge the power. Uh, and then she said, forgot to add Obama, starts with him, then Bernie, then AOC, then Bernie again, then Trump. 
uh, for not pardoning Assange and ending wars and now Tulsi. So, uh, yeah, we talked yeah. with Kim and she was like, yeah, you know, all these politicians, you know, they're just all right. failing us. And uh, she said that she actually reached out to Tulsi to uh, get her uh, take on her it. take on it as we did, as as did we. Yeah. So, I mean, we're not being bad faith here. You know, we're trying to get an explanation for why this is because she did so many great things. She was pro it's Julian Assange. Right. She destroyed Kamala Harris on the national stage. She uh, pointed out the warmongering Hillary Clinton. This is what I'm t- this is what I'm, she, she called Hillary Clinton uh, the rot. Of the yeah. Democratic Party, the dry yeah. of the Democratic Party, that the uh, Queen of Warmongers, Queen of Warmongers. So, and then, but but what you're but what she's saying is contradicting that because she's she's sort of mimicking 100%. a lot of Hillary Clinton's foreign policy. One hundred percent. So where where you know if Hillary Clinton is the Queen of Warmongers, the rot of the Democratic Party, yeah. Why are you kind of sort of okaying a lot of the foreign policy that she? is used to like a lot of the foreign policy she has pushed it just doesn't make any sense to me maybe because she's in the military now i don't know but i wouldn't we wouldn't have honesty or integrity on the show if we didn't criticize a politician rightfully just because i like a politician doesn't mean i'm not going to go after them i mean we went after bernie sanders hardcore i especially did after he fucking sold out and i continue to go after him because he's being a fucking cuck and that's that's the reality i politicians Mm -hmm. aren't your friends like i said we have more in common with each other than we do with these politicians yeah there it is by the, by the way, Johnny, the tweet that you put up, a lot of people were mad at Kim because she's they were like, don't speak for all of us. I'm sure Kim would say, all right, I'm sorry for speaking for all of you, but a lot yeah. of us are disappointed. <laughs> yeah. You know, whatever the case, I mean, we shouldn't twist words and put the narrative on why is Kim and why is Pasta saying everybody was thrown under the bus? Don't speak for all of us. Okay, fine. Why isn't it that the politician, all right, right. Tulsi Gabbard, is not being looked at for her fucking words. Right. And yet you're trying to focus <laughs> you're on going after our the language. Media, you're tone policing them. us because right. we're saying that. It's the same criticism I get after, go after of the people that protect AOC no matter what she does. And Bernie. And yeah. Bernie. It's yeah. the same way I, we go after them. It's like, it, it's you stop. Like, yeah. they're a po- stop being sycophants to politicians. If they don't do what they said they were going to do, what they ran on, you fucking tell them. Yeah. You hold them fucking accountable. Like, you don't make exceptions just because you like one better than the other. I'm sorry. That's not how it works. Uh, and while we're on the subject, too, those people who keep on telling us now, we told you Bernie was better. In, like, no, you're not getting it. Yeah. Bernie fucking no. sold out a while ago. Now here comes Tulsi coming along. You weren't right. Yeah. We were wrong in the fact that we should have probably trusted any fucking politician and stuff like that. But you weren't fucking right. No, okay? and, and, and because sh- your candidate was just as awful. Bernie, Bernie, like I said, he was for drone strikes. Yeah. And we, we still, Bernie was my compromise and I voted for Bernie twice. That doesn't mean yeah. that, you know, that that changes the, the foreign policy aspect of her knowledge of foreign policy is definitely far greater than Bernie's was. Bernie has voted for, uh, for war several times yeah. now. So don't, don't, don't pretend that Bernie yeah. is any better. Bernie I mean, this is voted just fucking, for the AUMF, ladies and gentlemen. This is fucking ridiculous. Bernie's writing op-eds, like kissing Biden's ass. None of these politicians are good. We, we, like we said it and Cynthia McKinney said it. We don't have friends in D.C. None. We have none. Cynthia Zero. McKinney called her out, too. I mean, we really don't have any. Like, it's it's really a sad state of affairs. It's a fucking weasel marmot bullshit. Fuck the, the, I'm going to, this goddamn <laughs> fucking marmot, I'm going to kill this marmot when I find this marmot. <laughs> it's already dead. It is? In this dimension. Oh, man. It probably escaped to another dimension, too. And just, we think it's dead and it's still alive. Um, Johnny, anything else before we get off the Congresswoman? Because, uh, you know. I'm still happy all the people I met. I still love you guys out there. You know that. I, I reach out to you all the time. Um, and I really wish you would join us in calling her out. She should come on to the people that supported her or covered her or whatnot and explain to them. But she hasn't, right? She hasn't. So just keep that in mind. And we've all reached out in a respectful manner and say, hey, man, please come clarify your statements. We're a little confused here because this is a 180-degree change. You know what I'm saying? About what she was saying. It was all about, always about keeping the eye on the American empire and what was our part. Their, what's the initial action? This is just a reaction. Jihadism is a reaction to the actions of the American empire. And that's what I thought she always stood for. And maybe I was wrong, but I think she should clarify those statements. 100%. And also we funded them. <laughs> yep. <sighs> Okay, so So we had James Starks. Now we have Unbeliever. Thank you for the Super 8 contribution. It is always appreciated on the couch. Uh, Lucky Burrito AM. Here's the link. 
uh, to our stream on Steve Cutler Live on YouTube. Uh, we do them all the time, so subscribe and don't miss out. Recharge your batteries with music and love. Steve takes request two. Leo's drumming and dancing video. Make sure you watch to the end. Makes, it's oh, what I'm sorry. Saying. No, you're, you're good. Uh, make sure you watch to the end. It's guaranteed to make you smile. Leo keeps a beat. He does. I've Leo's seen him. a little beautiful chihuahua. It is awesome. Um, Tim L. Thank you for the super rate contribution. Grateful for Tulsi exposing Kamala. But now that she's out of office and can speak her mind, she sounds like a garden variety Republican. She won't denounce genocide against Palestinians. Right. It's clear she, like AOC, were plants all along. I mean, can you argue it? Now the Council of Foreign Relations thing, it's like, oh my God. Right. Oh my God. And it's just a deeper, nuanced fucking form of sheep herding. Right. Now we're getting moved over because just like us, we're like, oh, these progressives were moved over because of their feelings. Right. It was all about the rhetoric and their feelings. That's how they were moved over. People have a strong connection to the Congresswoman and they're being right. moved the same way. Oh, no, no, no. She doesn't mean all Muslims. She means just a specific type of jihadist Muslim. And that's what she's talking about. No. Sorry. And, and sorry, guys, but saying things like I don't question the integrity. It, it, so you put her above like a human, a normal human. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You should question anybody's integrity. Everybody is up for criticism. Everybody's up for questioning. When you put people on a fucking pedestal like that. Yes. You 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 allow yourself then to become uh, blind to their faults, especially somebody that's represented people that's likely going to run for office again. I mean, I'm sorry, but saying things like I don't question the integrity. Uh, if somebody gives you a reason to question them, you absolutely should. There's nothing wrong with yeah. that. And remember when we were calling out the AOC thing, when a lot of us who were Tulsi supporters or supported anti-war, anti-imperialism, or whatever you want to call yourself, the whole, I'm going to defer to the caucus leadership when it comes to Venezuela. It's like, oh my God, and Garland Nixon made a great tweet. AOC was for funding the fucking regime change in Venezuela and stuff like that. What you're doing right now with the congresswoman is almost the same way. You're actually manufacturing consent for imperialism and war by going along with this rhetoric. And like I said, the scary part of lumping in Iran with this situation I, yeah. is beyond sinister in my mind. It's beyond sinister. Instead of straightening out her position, she doubled down. It's yeah. very sad. It's a sad moment. Uh, Fajar Rob Takayo, thank you for the super rate contribution. It is always appreciated on the couch. 105 people watching on Rockfin. We have 356 on the YouTubes. Hi, Karen M. Troy C. Karen M. Troy C. I just read those names twice, twice, twice. And we have about uh, five watching currently on the Odyssey, guys. So get on over. Like, share, and subscribe. Um, so this is a short section. Yes, I just wanted to but it's a good section. point this out. Yeah. yeah, this is interesting. Hawk Newsom coming into play. Hawk Newsom, this BLM activist, uh, joined several others saying that the Vax Passport was is used to excuse racism. So there was this uh, ABC article um, ABC New York, three were charged in Carmine assault. They claimed racial bias. The restaurant released videos. Um, and I just, I guess I'll just read a, the very beginning of this uh, paragraph. About 30 to 40 protesters gathered outside of the restaurant Carmine's Italian restaurant. Um, <laughs> shit. Uh, it, on the Upper West Side Monday evening amid allegations by three women charged with assaulting a hostess over a proof of vaccination dispute that they were racially profiled. This came out as the eatery released a new video of the incident without audio. The owner says shows a clear picture of what happened. The footage shows a woman walking up behind the hostess and surrounding her before the scuffle broke out. So let's kind of play it before we play the, the protest. Yeah, it's like hard to tell any of this stuff. Interesting, yeah. The elites, they pitted people against each other. Right. Now hostesses are Nazi polices. Right. You know, it's... Uh, uh, these people don't want that job either. They don't want the job of having to fucking become cops and demand your papers. They really don't. It's above their pay grade. Like a hostess to like 
a hostess is working class. You get what? Maybe fifteen dollars an hour if you're lucky as a hostess. Maybe yeah. I don't know. Like you don't maybe. really. Maybe a few tips here and there from maybe. the the servers. Yeah, After a while, you're not making very much money. It's like yeah. a you know early. What is it like a first level entry job at a restaurant? Like, so they're fighting these these people. I mean, it's just so dumb. Yeah. So, what happened was that there was um, a protest outside of the restaurant, and Hawk Newsom said that you will not use these Vax passports to cover up your racist ways, to cover up your discrimination. Yeah. And he, they said that th he was stating that the the Carmines lied and used the Vax card as an excuse for their racism so they're claiming that the vaccination card the vaccine passport the, there the excelsior is what they're using is an excuse for racism so let's let's hear what he's saying and to put this city on notice you will not use these vaccines passports to cover up for your racist ways to come up to cover up for your discrimination because a lot of you out here behind these cameras I know and you knew what happened when the NYPD was used to enforce social distancing in this city last year it laid it led to a wave of protests right before George Floyd so we will not have the NYPD being called into these restaurants to harass attack and arrest our people no way no how are we allowing that to happen by the way hawk newsom is the guy we've talked about several times he was one of my favorite moments when right. he led a group a small group of six uh, six or seven black lives matter supporters into a trump rally right convinced the organizers to let them go on stage and talk and after they were taking pictures with each other hugging chanting together it was one of the greatest moments now hawk newsom did leave black lives matter and he's since returned because uh, he wasn't, I, I don't, I don't know exactly why, but I'm assuming that happy with the leadership. Yeah. But we don't know. But I'm glad to see him back, doing what's going on. The main thing I want to also point out is that where the racism is coming from, it's coming from up top, and it's trickling all the way down, and it's rearing its disgusting, dirty head for us to fight with each other and go at each other, and we need to recognize what it is and how it's being used and to stop it. But recognition is the first part. Because right. who is most hesitant to get this shot? Working class people, which includes a lot of minorities. Yes, even people of color who know the history of the CDC exactly. and what they did in Tuskegee. Right. So it is a discriminatory, racist fucking program. Garland when Nixon you... has talked about it. Yes. This is the new Jim Crow, the real new Jim, Jim Crow. Crow. Not, the, not the voting shit, but this. Because what you're doing is you're segregating people. And by the way, how am I supposed to know if somebody is asking me for my vaccine passport and not the upper class looking lady next door is she are they asking her for that because we saw the other video last week right where it was like this family and they they he, they were like you didn't ask them for it you know you didn't ask them for their card you asked us how do we know that people don't have like implicit bias and aren't asking poor looking people or, or minorities, you know, that look a little bit off or different for their cars and not for everybody else. That's going to be in the back of the people's mind. So you can't separate that. You These mandates and these passports are going to be are already a problem. And these people are already seeing it. And I think it needs to come from somebody like that, that is like an activist and a supporter of BLM, because like the, if it, it like, <laughs> you know, a lot of these these liberals and these progressives think that it's just so, because they don't want that to happen to them. They don't want to fucking deal with that shit either. And it's a lot of working class minorities that have never trusted the government to help them in any way. They're like, wait a minute. I want to wait a little bit to put to see what's going on.